Black opal, uh, that can definitely be used as a concealer. Black opal is actually a drugstore. They named Naya. I know I cut myself off. <laughs> Their youngest brand ambassador years yes, ago, which was ago. really, really cool. Hey, it's Marquetta Breslin, and I'm here with Naya Breslin. Naya Breslin, makeup and beauty. <laughs> um, today, and yes, I'm wearing a bonnet because you are going to get ready with me. So on Mondays, we film, and before we film, usually Naya does my makeup, sometimes I do my own makeup, and you can tell the difference. <laughs> but I've gotten a lot better since you yes. taught me some things. Dang! <laughs> So today, I'm going to let Naya take over this video and give you a tutorial on how she beats this face. Okay, so first, I already shaved her face. Um, <laughs> yes, I have a hairy face. <laughs> <laughs> I already shaved her face, but we're gonna moisturize first. I'm gonna let her do that. Okay. We're doing the Kiehl's... Um, Canduela. Uh, it's like a water-based moisturizer because I get really, really oily. Um, now my hands are clean, they have been sanitized. And, and this is her personal moisturizer. Right, and this is my own personal moisturizer. It's usually what I take with me when I travel, but ain't nobody traveling <laughs> now. So it's just in my makeup bag. And I always start off with the eyes. So while she moisturizes her face, I'm gonna use the Biscuit, or NARS Creamy Concealer in Biscuit, the cream version with my um, Morphe M410 brush, and I'm gonna carve out her brows. She already tweezed them, and they're already microbladed, so this should be easy. I'm just gonna follow the natural shape. I like flat brushes like this so I can get really precise under the brow. And then I don't use eye primer, I just use the concealer. I'm not a big fan of eye primer or face primer. I just, I'm gonna use the concealer, and I don't really go above her brow, unless it's to the end to sharpen up. Um, the corner of the brow. Now, I, one thing I forgot to mention is that you have, last year, almost a year ago, you launched your own makeup course. Yep, I did launch my own makeup course, and the makeup course teaches you literally everything I know. I didn't hold anything back. It was a lot of fun to film, and it's available on my website now. Um, yeah, I just love that course. And it was the first time me filming a course and really, cause I only do tutorials on my YouTube channel, um, but I really got to lay everything out on the table. I got to show you my whole makeup kit, um, what I learned, my tips and tricks, cause everybody has their own. And yeah, it was just fun to film. I just carved the in, just the ends of her brows to make it a little bit more sharp and precise. I don't go all the way above and then I kind of um, take it a little bit less so it's not hard to blend out. And I don't like to use a beauty blender. I love to blend this with my fingers. I don't know why. <laughs> I just, it's just easier. Yeah, I try to stay away from that line right under her brow. And I do brows first because if I were to have her foundation already laid, it would just be light right here and like around here. So doing her brows first, I can cover that up with foundation. It looks more natural. I don't like when people connect their brows. It doesn't make any sense to me, so I just kind of blend that up <laughs> like that. And then... Wait, what do you mean connect the brows? Like with the concealer, they'll drag it across, oh. I guess to make sure that it's even. Mm -hmm. But if your brows are already even, you shouldn't really have to do that. So I just kind of blend that up. And then... Let me just... What concealer are you using? Or did you already tell them? I said it, but it's the NARS Creamy Concealer and Biscuit. 
Now, I have, you've tried the liquid one in the same brand. Yes, I just love cream concealers because it's just thicker in general. And with that liquid, I have to take it, rub it on the back of my hand, and then it might be a little too thin, so I have to like layer it. I just love cream concealers, and plus they're easier to move around. But on my face, face, on myself, I use um, the, the liquid. liquid. Yeah, I just think it's Why? easier. Because you could, it's just a tube, but with this, with brows, um, just putting it on the back Ew. of my hand, yeah. But I don't, I carve out my brows with a different concealer. I don't use this. What do you use to carve out your brows? I use MAC. <laughs> really? I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, I use MAC to carve out my brows. Why? Do you like the consistency? Do you like the color? Um, The color. And plus, I feel like in this, um, my, I'm Canelli in NARS concealer. And I feel like NARS Canelli in the tube versus the pot are two different colors. The, the ones in the pot are darker to me. Um, so I use MAC and I want to, I, my brows are always a little bit lighter. Hmm. That's right. I didn't know that. Yeah. So now I'm going to set her eyes real quick with um, Laura Mercier. Which is the best transition powder. Literally, it's a magic powder. Oh, it is it's amazing. so good. You can not know how to do makeup and still look halfway decent with this powder. <laughs> yes, this powder is so well. It's amazing. Sorry, babe. Mm -hmm. And this powder is so good and I don't have to buy... Um, this is translucent, so I don't have to buy different powders for each shade of skin tone that I do. So, her eyes are all set. Um, I don't really fill in her brows because they're already microbladed. So, I'm going to go in with the Pat McGrath. Okay, I always open it from the wrong side. <laughs> and I'm going to go in with my Morphe M441 brush. And I'm going to go with this darker shade right here. Tap on says, And then, just starting in her crease. Now, Naya, mm -hmm. what is the key to blending eyeshadow? Is, I always, okay. Key to blending eyeshadow is just keep blending. Like when, usually I have a brush to, if you're doing more intense color looks, I will have a brush to place the product and then I'll have a brush to blend out the edges. Um, and that's how to get the most color in your eyeshadow and the most pigment. Usually with these transition shades, I don't do that because their transition shades are supposed to be kind of faint. But blending um, is to have a light hand really at the end of the brush, not too like up here because if it's too up here, it's too concentrated. If it's at the end of the brush, you have less control, which is um, great for blending. And that's, I learned that at like eight from Marissa Ross. Marissa Ross. Yes. She um, always taught me to have a light hand when I'm blending. And especially these edges, I have a super light hand because if it's too heavy, then that color is just gonna, um, it's gonna you're gonna create a harsh line. So I just blend like this. Look at me. Good. And then sometimes I'll take my finger to blend out those edges. Now, um, what is your take on the tape and the eyeshadow and like does that just give a different look? Or? Yeah, I like that look. Um, I don't do the tape normally. I just kind of do it on my own and then I'll like cut it with some concealer. But the tape, I like it, especially for people who are um, practicing wing eyeliner. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's good only with gel though. Don't do it with liquid because liquid will bleed through and it won't work with the tape. But with gel, it's nice um, to practice mm -hmm. with that. But I love that tape look so much. I do too. Yeah. What's your favorite type of makeup to do? Um, probably smoky eyes and like brown smoky eyes. I think my classic look that I always do that I love is the brown in the corner and to kind of elongate the eyes. Elongate? Elongate <laughs> the eyes. Um, and like a, a rose gold or a nice Gold in the corner, in the corner. like in the inner corner. Yep. Yeah, that's my favorite. I don't know why. I just think it it's so pretty. But I also always take my eyeshadow a little bit out. I never round it out. I just feel like that makes the eyes look circle, and I want to like. Pe Whoa, models. <laughs> <laughs> models usually buy tape that um, that they have that they stick right here, and they will pull around the, to the back of the hair to make their eyes kind of. Um, like this, kind of like that model. You know how models always have their eyes like this. So I like to create that look with the eyeshadow with kind of winging it out a little bit. That's what I like to do. That's the brown set in her crease like that. And then with Pat McGrath, I always take 
Well, first off, I always ask what she's wearing because it depends on the eyeshadow. This shirt right here. Yeah. Oh, this shirt. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So with that shirt, I'm going to do. Um, I can really do any color I want, which is I'm gonna do. I said gold, but I'm gonna do more of like a rose gold. And I always use my fingers because fingers do not soak up product. Um, brushes. I feel like the product gets stuck in the bristles, so I always use my finger. Sometimes I use my pinky if I want to get real inner in the inner corner, but so far I'm gonna use my middle finger. And if you just see that, like Pat McGrath, she does her thing with these shadows. She's just so talented. Look at me. Or look at the camera. Like that. I'm gonna go in with a couple more layers. Ow. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna take it and I kinda like to just blend it out with my fingers a little bit. And kind of pat it. And then I'm gonna take that um, brush that we blended the corners with. And I'm gonna blend all this out because that color can rise as my finger is big. That color can spread out to here and then that corner and everything. So I'm gonna take this brush and just kind of push that color back. And then to add more dimension, I'm gonna take my Anastasia palette, I've had this palette for literally forever. <laughs> and I'm gonna take a black shade and I'm gonna go right on her lash line. And I'm kind of smoke it up, having that light hand. I don't rub back and forth, I'm kind of just easily bringing the product where I want. But where you first place that product is where the most product is going to be. So I want that most product to be at the lash line. And then I'm just gonna smoke it up a little bit. Like that, and I'm using this brush so I can get really precise on that lash line. If I were to use something like this, it would have spread everywhere. It would have been really hard to blend out. So I'm using a more precise brush. Take a step back and look at your work. How do you know when it's blended? That's a good question. Where you don't see any harsh lines or faint lines where it starts and ends. Right now, I'm smoking out this black and I'm trying to figure out um, you know, where my black starts. It obviously is more intense at the lash line, but I don't, I wanna make sure that I can't see a harsh line of black of where it ends. I want it to be gradient. And right now I can kind of see a line where that rose gold and that black are not blending. So I'm just gonna easily not put any more product on the brush, but go in that and then I'm gonna take that rose gold finger and I'm just gonna tap that and just keep going back and forth. But you wanna make sure you don't know where it starts and where it ends. It just should look, you use that word gradient. Let me adjust my booty. Use the word gradient, which I think is per the perfect word to use for something like this. Mm -hmm. Like I'm really um, particular when it comes to blending the shadows because that can really tell if you're a good, good artist or not, if everything is just blended. And if you're not sure, just keep blending. And then also, um, if you're not sure if it's blended, don't put more product on the brush to try to blend out that harsh line. Just keep moving that brush, even try to use a clean brush to move that product, because it'll also take some of that product away. So her eyes are done. I'm gonna go in using her foundation. I use the Black Opal Nutmeg Foundation, and it's a stick foundation. This is her personal one. So I'm just gonna... Yep, so don't be in the comments like, uh-uh, that's not sanitary. Yeah, this, all this makeup is her own. Yeah, so my bad. I don't use it for any yeah. other clients or anything like that. So, makeup brushes. How often should you clean your makeup brushes? Don't ask me, because I'm not going to give you the answer that you are looking for. <laughs> um, I think of an appropriate, it depends on how many clients you have that day. It depends on how much you use your brushes. Um, who you're using them on. If you're using them for clients and you have clients every day, wash them at the end of the day, but spot clean them after every client. But if you're just using them on yourself, I'd say like 
once every four to five days is good. So <clears throat> Naya had, how many clients did you do that day when you had to do the birthday makeup for the ladies that flew in? I had one, four. Two, four clients. And in one day, same sitting, she had four clients. And so in between those clients, I was assisting her. Yes. I had to spot clean her brushes. And so we used 99%. I think it was 99% alcohol and I put yeah. it, or 91%, and, and I put it in a bottle. spray bottle. And all yeah. I did was spray my brushes and rub it on a towel. And I brought a whole roll of paper towels. And I made sure everything was clean as she was going. I so. sanitized my tools again. Um, I organized my kit after every client. So usually when I'm doing makeup, I kind of put everything everywhere, but after every client, I reorganize it so that I'm not confused and I'm not looking for stuff because that's just wasting time. Yeah, and you just have to ha make sure you have your spoolies and everything so there is no cross-contamination and all of that good stuff. Yeah, I kind of learned about that growing up because she was in cosmetology school and I learned from her and other Ooh. makeup for you. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now that her faces are done, or her foundation's laid, I'm gonna use the same concealer, and I'm using an artiste brush. Look up. And I don't like, I'm just gonna place it under her eye, by the way, kind of going in like down her nose, meeting at the corner, and then angling out, because that's where the light hits, is the center of the face. Um, but I don't normally like using artiste brushes on clients. I don't know, I just don't. Not even that you normally don't, you don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I only use them on my mom. I don't know why, just, you started, you bought them, and then I you started them using, them, and, using them. Yeah. And it just, I like the way that it just blended her foundation out, but I don't think it's, I don't know why, I just don't think it's professional, in my opinion, to it's use not. them. But and it's easy for me. Yeah, the <laughs> way you clean them too, like you can't clean with regular soap and water, and I don't, I just don't like that, so. Um. I use regular brushes, but on her I use Artiste brushes. Okay. I'm going down the nose and then kind of pulling it out. You mean the side of the nose? Yeah, the side of the, the, side of the nose. Getting rid of them there. Then I like to go, I kind of like to do a triangle neat at the top of her lip. I just started doing that randomly and then I liked the way it turned out. The, dot the point of the nose, or the tip of the nose, and then I skip, I don't go all the way down, but I go start about right here, and then I fan out. And then the chin. And then I blend that out with a beauty blender. I'm blending this out with a beauty blender. I like to blend these edges out first. Then I'll go in the corner. Then I am blending out this part right here. Sometimes this can spread and make the whole forehead light, so I can go with the butt of the beauty blender and just blend those edges. Always take a step back, look up. Always take a step back of your work. Cause right now it looks good to me, but I'm gonna take a step back and see. And it's usually this area that's um, not blended. Okay, and always under the eye. All right, so now for setting, take my Laura Mercier. Okay. Ooh, we need to order some more. I know, I just realized. <laughs> um, I'm gonna keep having her look up and then take some and tap it right under the eye. So would this be what they call, or used to call baking? Yeah, technically it is baking, but it's I setting, just, really, it's just, yeah, in the makeup world. Yeah, it's just world. setting in the makeup world. And you're setting the highlight, or the yep. areas that you just highlighted. Yep, and then I always go on these smile lines, but just everywhere where you want to bring out. Um, then I'm going to take the Beauty Blender, and I always go right Now, here. what is that doing? 
that's just cutting the cheekbone, making it more defined. Come through cheekbone. <laughs> I don't like to use concealer on that part. I just feel like it makes it too light. So while she's setting, I'm gonna go with her contour and I'm just going with this little artiste brush. And I'm just going to, I'm gonna blend it a little bit with this too. Cause you don't want that product, that cream to set. Just blending that out with the butt of a beauty blender. How do you know where to put the contour? Um, I always start at, if you turn this way, you'll see this point in her ear. I always kind of start with that. I'm not sliding up her hairline, but um, but with the wherever the corner of the ear is and where her, what's this called, sideburns are, <laughs> is where I kind of <laughs> put the contour. And then I start right there, and then I always go up into the forehead. And then sometimes I'll take the brush that her foundation is on, and I'll just blend it together. That side's done. So is this, a lot of makeup artists teach the number three, like boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Is that the same as this or? Yep, it is. And how do you choose a, a contour shade? Just um, remember your foundation shade and mm -hmm. then whatever your foundation shade is, you just go two shades darker than that. And then concealer is two shades lighter. And that's the foundation shade. Do you believe in, I'm asking you a lot of questions. <laughs> do you believe in using foundation for contour and concealer? Or do you believe in using concealer for concealer and contour for contour? Or what, what are your thoughts on well, that? that depends on if, how your skin is. If you, well, first of all, I'm gonna set this contour, by the way. Um, if you have, like if your skin is all one, you don't have dark circles or anything, you could definitely put foundation and just cover that up and have a blank canvas. But um, for stuff like this, like for TV and all film, that film mm -hmm. um, I use concealer and all that. But if you have great skin and you have no dark circles, yeah. But do not use foundation as contour. Foundation, contour is used to give dimension and your foundation will be flat if you use that as contour. No, I mean, in terms of how to select the product, like, some people will say you should never use foundation for concealer. You see, you know what I'm saying? Like, like let's say two shades lighter than this for me is Kalahari Sand yeah. for uh, Black Opal. Mm -hmm. I have used, I personally have used that as a concealer Oh, I know before. what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, 100%. Um, concealer, I used to use foundation as concealer. I used to use Kalahari Sand. Um, to me, it doesn't really make a difference. However you feel is, um, however you, f like the texture and how you feel like you wanna work with or what you wanna work with and what your skin is used to and what your skin takes better. Might be foundation, might be concealer. But I used to use foundation as con for concealer or for her for a long time. It probably depends on the product line too because you have some companies like, uh, Ben Nye and mm -hmm. companies like Cry Krylon, am I saying that right? Krylon. Krylon, that specialize in, like their concealer is a concealer. Like yeah. it is oh, meant yeah, to yeah, yeah. conceal. So it probably also depends on the product line as well, depending on, I'm trying to get that glue off the top, uh. what you choose, so. Yeah, you're right yeah. about that as well. But Black Opal, uh, that can definitely be used as a concealer. Black Opal is actually a drugstore. They named Naya. I know I cut myself off. <laughs> Their youngest brand ambassador years yes, ago, which was ago. really, really cool. Um, but I will say this, they're a drugstore brand that is phenomenal. And when you went to a class with Sam Fine and Lenny Vasquez, and that's what they used in the class. Yep. And it's just such a great brand, and it's such a great, um, great coverage for the price and you know and for it being drugstore yep. um, I'm contouring her face right now powder contouring with Mac studio fix in NW50 with my Mac brush the numbers are all rubbed off but hmm. just light hand powder contour 
it's kind of tedious, you want to have a light hand. And then if you see this right here, you see that round? I also like to blend that out. This is probably my favorite area to contour. It's really warm. And then if you smile, I warm up her cheeks like that. I always um, powder contour after I wipe the powder off because the powder, I feel like, gets into here and it makes it lighter. So powder contouring will bring that dimension back to her face after all that powder. All right, so now I'm gonna line her waterline with Inglot number 77. It's just a black eyeliner. And I love this look, like especially when I put that, <laughs> I saw that, <laughs> when I put that uh, black in the inner corner, this is just gonna make everything, I don't know the word, I wanna say sultry, but I don't even know if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Sultry. Mm -hmm. This is my least favorite part because I want to scratch my eyes <laughs> off when she's doing this because it tickles. Yeah, I don't like getting my makeup done. I can't even, <gasps> I, can, I don't even know how I would be able to do that. I've only ever seen you get your makeup done once. Yep. That was that she used to be a Justice brand yes, ambassador. Yes, I knew it, yeah. And they um, pay for us to come up to Ohio for she, for her, for she, for her <laughs> to walk in the fashion show for their winter line and she filmed some videos and she sat down to get her makeup done at the first time. And, and it was weird seeing her on the other side of the brush. I know it was, and it felt weird too. Like, when, when she, even when she was applying my concealer, I didn't know where to look. Like, I was <laughs> such a weird. But I can get super close to my eye. Like, I don't have no problem with that. But, like, I don't know. I just never usually get my makeup done. But I just smoked out her bottom lashes or but her lower lash line with black, and I'm gonna do some mascara. Again, her personal mascara. I love this mascara. As a matter of fact, you will see me use this mascara in my very first YouTube video. No way. Yes. Not this exact, like this, meaning MAC Extended Play. Yeah, I got this for Christmas and I use this one mm -hmm. in my um, makeup video. Just like that. Okay, so for her lashes, I'm using the Duo um, Dark Lash Glue. Now, that thing is dirty. It's dirty, <laughs> but it works. <laughs> and I use dark because clear, I don't like using clear at all unless I'm doing like um, no eyeshadow look um, or something like that. But like I usually normally use dark because um, it'll replace, it doesn't replace eyeliner, but you can tell, really tell with clear where the lashes and the lash um, don't connect like it's a line right there and that black just fills everything in and makes it look so much better I love using the black one now you use the end of a tweezer yeah I use the end of a tweezer sometimes I use my finger but like I use I've always used the end of a tweezer from when I started makeup sometimes I use the end of a brush but I like the tweezers I'm gonna take some and put a lot on there I'm gonna go and I'm gonna place that extra product uh, that extra lash glue on her eye. And I learned this trick from Rennie. Rennie takes it. Rennie who? Rennie Vasquez. <laughs> Rennie um, puts dots on the lash and then dots on the eye, but I just do it like this. I don't know why I just learned like this. And it acts as a magnet. Yep. So as I don't let it completely dry, but as it um, is tacky, I connect it and it works so well, the lash stays on. I put a little bit more on the outer corner and inner corner as well. Cause I don't know why, but those always just don't like to stick. Like that. And I let that get a little tacky. You could tell if it's tacky is if um, some spots are black and some spots are still white. Gray. Gray. <laughs> Gray. We're just gonna wait for that. Let dry a little bit. How do you choose the right lashes? Um, that would really depends on personal preference. If you love dramatic lashes, then choose a dramatic lash. But um, with these, I love, I don't know why I love these lashes so much. I don't know what brand they are, but they're from, where are they from? <laughs> I'm yawning. Um, <laughs> I think, I don't know. I don't, I got them from CVS. Yeah, but they're so good. I like them because, well, first I always pick lashes that are shorter in the inner corner and longer on the outer corner. 
Um, again, getting that look of like that model look. Facelift. Yeah, facelift. Facelift. Um, by the way, the shadow, the glue is tacky. You can tell in what some spots. What about this side? Because this was first. Yep. So I take it by the middle. I always apply it in the middle. Then the outer corner. Then the inner corner. So I go middle, outer, inner. Everybody has a different lash technique. Sorry. But on this eye, I'm going to do, you gotta, anyways, whatever I do, I always start with the middle. Okay. I miss you. Now, when someone is, when you say look down versus close, close, because you always say this to me, um, close um, is usually when you close, all your skin gathers in right here. But when I say look down, it's all smooth. So don't, if you're doing makeup on your clients, they'll tell them to close, tell them to look down, because it's smooth and you can see everything. Mm -hmm. Pretty. I'm gonna take that mascara, look down. And I'm going to blend her lashes with this. Like that. Now blush. Blush transforms everything, adds so much color and life to the face. I use Endless and this Tarte palette, Blush Bazaar palette. I always use Endless. Smile. And I just put it on her cheeks, blend it in with that contour. Blush is like my favorite thing ever. On myself and on. I love it on the forehead, nose. If it's just, I, I like to say it's um, when you work out and wherever you're red is where you can apply your blush. Cheeks, my, my whole face is well, red. just so. color my whole yeah, face. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, but I like to put some on the forehead, a little bit on the nose and the chin, like that. And then I'm gonna take a fan brush. Most people don't like using fan brushes. I'm gonna use Whimsical in the high. I like to use this highlighter. Um, but most people don't like to use fan brushes because it gives it that harsh line, but it's just the way you place the product. If you turn it right here, I like to place it by, I like to place it right here and then fan out. If you do this, yeah, it is gonna give you that harsh line, but if you fan out, smile, and apply the highlighter on the apples of the cheeks, then it gives you an overall glow, not just that one streak. <laughs> And then a little bit on the nose, forehead, cupid's bow, and chin. Relax. Chin down. Okay. Okay, so for her lips, I'm going to take some micellar water and a Q-tip. I'm just gonna remove that foundation. Again, this is her micellar water. <laughs> so, I'm just gonna remove that foundation. It tickles. It does? <laughs> yes. Sorry about that. Yep, looks like that. I can't believe it's a close. And if you do it that harsh line, it kind of looks like a little corner. Like that. And then I'm just going to put this gloss on her. What did I do with it? It's uh, right there. Oh, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this gloss is so pretty. This is Trippy by Morphe, and it is just such a pretty color. I miss you. And I'm just going to put it. And she's done. That's her face makeup. Voila. Okay, so 
Um, tell everybody where they can find you. I'm going to continue on the video because I had to do my hair, but tell everybody where they can find you and all that good stuff. You can find me on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, all at Nye Breslin, and then you can find me on TikTok. Oh Lord, <laughs> TikTok. At Breslin Baby. And that is my social media. All right, thank you so much, Naya, for thank doing you. my makeup. She will be on my channel quite a bit from here and there. But be sure to go and subscribe to all of her stuff. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to her. I'm going to go off the camera now, let Naya clean this up, and I'm going to come back. I'm going to show you what I do to my hair to get ready. All right, so now that Naya has moved her mess out of the way, I'm just going to uh, show you what I do to my hair. So... Um, I took the bonnet off. This sew-in is old as dirt. It is, Rob sewed these um, wefts into my hair while we were in India back in February, and now it is April, and I'm holding on for dear life because I don't want to. I don't want to relax my hair. I don't want to do my own sew-in. I don't, I'm just holding on for dear life and I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to hold on. I actually think I'm gonna have to take it out this week. But for filming today, I have to do something to my hair. So, I'm just gonna go through and show you how I quickly, now watch me get this together in about eight minutes, okay? So I'm not gonna go through and straighten every piece of this hair because it's just not necessary. I put it in a bonnet at night. Sometimes I tie it down at night, but you see through here, my hair is still pretty short. My hair used to be in like the sides were shaved at one point, my whole head was shaved at one point. I mean, I've had every style under the sun. So what I'm gonna do with these edges, sometimes I'll go through with the flat iron and I don't have my skinny flat iron, but sometimes what I do is just straighten that out but what I'm going to do is use some of my Rob Fuchs Edge Control. Rob is one of my mentees who launched his Edge Control last year. And I'm so proud of him. This stuff is amazing. But he's not the only one. There's Monica Mojazzy. This stuff works miracles. I always say if it can slick my hair down and my hair doesn't pop back up and start smiling, then it is amazing. And my hair does not pop back up and start smiling. But I will say this, my hair is also, it's time for me to wash. So it may not hold as good as it normally does, but it's gonna get the job done for filming. So because my hair doesn't show all down here on the sides, I really don't have to do anything to that if I don't want to, because nobody is gonna see that. And I usually do this last, but since I'm here and it's bothering me, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it now. Just put a little bit right there. There. Okay, now what I'm going to do is you see these like waves? I just wanna get those waves out. So I have a heat resistant comb right here and I have some Moroccan oil. I like to use my Moroccan oil as a heat protectant, not only on my hair, but on the extensions as well. This is a relaxed texture extension well some relaxed textured wefts and they will be from my own line but they're not available yet i've been wearing them to see how i like them to see how it responds to me being rough with it and all kinds of things so i love this hair and it looks very very natural when my hair is together if you don't know me you don't know that this isn't my hair. Yeah, see my scalp is just trifling right now. So living in the desert, one of the things that I learned quickly living in the desert is that it's 
so drying to your scalp, your skin, your life. So <laughs> moisture is the name of the game. I mean, it's so dry here that I stopped using lotion. I had to use Aquaphor, like the thick Aquaphor or Vaseline. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do first actually is I'm gonna straighten my leave out. And I'm just gonna take tiny little pieces Okay. And just go and pull that iron through. The smoke that you hear and see is the product. It's from the uh, Moroccan oil. Now normally, I would go through with my comb and do all of that stuff, but I'm not doing that right now because it's not overly necessary on my natural hair unless I see my ends start to do something crazy like that then I'll come through with my comb so what you want to do with your comb is you want to make sure that you place your comb at the base or below wherever that flat iron is going to be I mean I'm sorry not below it but above it and you want to pull at the same time That's just going to help to straighten out the end. Now, because I'm doing this on camera, it is super difficult to see what I'm doing. But when I get to the longer parts, you'll be able to see with no problem. I miss you. Once I get most of my leave out done, I like to come through and straighten it with the extensions because that helps to maintain that consistency. All right, so now I'm really gonna use my curl. Place it at the base, pull through once, and come through with that comb. And it just marries everything together really nicely. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my comb real fast and pull it through this hair. Now you see how my flat iron is stopping like that? It's because there's so much product on my flat iron from my daughter using it. I'm sure you mothers out there with teenage daughters can relate. Okay, I'll go through with one pass, put my comb in, and pull through. You see the difference already? Over here is nice and straight, and then over here, it's not done yet. Then what I do at the end, once I get, once I go through at least once with the flat iron, once I'm all done with the iron, I just go through and um, add a little bit more Moroccan oil to tame those flyaways. Again, this is a very quick job. Normally, I take my time and go through and section each piece of hair, like each weft, I would go through and section and straighten it one weft at a time. But because I'm not going anywhere, you can't really see that much of it on camera, I'm just not gonna do that. Okay. This side is done, this side is not. All right, so I'm just gonna go through. do the same thing over here. All 
All right, and this is the finished product. Voila! My hair, I did real fast. Don't judge me. Um, <laughs> and my makeup, my daughter took her time and she taught during the whole process, but this is pretty much what we go through when we're getting ready to film. And the time varies depending on what my hair is looking like. Um, if I have a wig, I just throw that thing on and we're, boom, we're done like that. So this is it. Hope you like it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Thank <laughs> you.